Welcome to the Better Pairs Podcast. Join Dr. Jason Fujikawa for his insights on theology, philosophy, culture, and the verbal expressions we use to relate meaning and reality to one another. Make no mistake, this is a podcast for nerds, but particular nerds who are searching for old wisdom made ever new. To learn more about the Better Pairs cultural empire, please visit betterpairs.com. Episode 6, Community We desire communion. We desire community. We find undesirable the task of defining what we mean by communion or community. Perhaps we are enticed by phonetic association to think of these terms as unity experienced together, owing to the com prefix assimilated from the Latin prefix cum, meaning with, thus presuming others and hence meaning together. The problem with this understanding is that pesky second letter M in both communion and community. Assimilation usually is the change the morphine of the prefix or preposition to the verbal root in order to sound better according to a language's aural palate. Unlike abbreviation, which itself is not abbreviated, assimilation bears with itself its meaning since we do not, or at least no longer say, odd assimilation. The D in odd has assimilated benevolently for our ears into an S. Returning to community and communion, the second consonant, M, lingers on, or rather, appears to our puzzlement. I suggest that the root of the word community is not un, as in the solitary Latin words as unus, meaning one, or unitas, meaning unity, but rather mun, as in munus, munaris, and in the plural, munera. This latter noun is an archaic form of the ancient Latin word moenia, meaning walls, especially the external walls of a city. Munus munaris continued in later Latin writing, if not common parlance, through two extended or transferred meanings. Walls, especially city walls, are limited in the North American experience, I am told, to Quebec City, which was founded prior to the domination of cannon artillery, whose odd, or rather ammunition, was literally volleyed at or to the walls, and on account of which ushered the end of defensive walled cities on the continent. In prior ages, however, a city wall was a great advantage to the civic good, the public thing, or res publica. Still, even then, walls presented a burden, responsibility, or office, our first extended meaning of munus. An unguarded wall provides no defense and enables an, at an attacker to approach undetected. The high walls over the plains of Windy Troy fell when, in addition to being destroyed to allow the faded horse entry, the night guards left their post in drunken celebratory revelry. City walls offer defense when they themselves are defended by those responsible for the public good. This good, common to all in the city, introduces the second and final extended meaning of munus, that is, as gift or benefit. Aristotle remarks in his first book of his politics that the city, and here distinct from villages by those very walls, is the place where the perfection of man is possible, and that he who founds a city is the greatest benefactor of his people, one who is truly munificent. Munera, then, are the walls, the means by which the community comes into being as such, the responsibility or office that burdens those seeking the community's perdurance, and the good, diffused and common to many, which incites the response to service. Community and communion are weightier, earthier words than most realize. More than mere fraternity, conviviality, or social bonds unfettered to people and place, 
Community is grounded in duty to seemingly topographical and tribal coincidence, yet also enduring and condign consequence. For those seeking to found or elevate communities or communions, a helpful rule or measure is the response or responsibility its members share towards preserving, conserving, and observing the benefits they hold in common or commune. A community of solely takers, of negligent officers, of taciturn watchmen is not long lasting in this life and abhorrent in this respect to the life to come. The views expressed by Better Pairs contributors are theirs alone and do not necessarily reflect the views of Better Pairs, its parent company, or any company or organizations affiliated with the contributors. For more information to support Better Pairs or to shop for Better Pairs merchandise, please visit betterpairs.com.